Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamantungwa Kumalo. This is episode 18 of the Private Property Podcast. And we're, of course, on day 41 of the national lockdown. This evening's topic is quite an exciting one. And I'm sure many of us are trying to find different ways that we can make money, especially if you've got a bond facility or more than one bond facility. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. We'll be looking at the different ways that you can make money from your bond facility facility where you can access some of that money. And to help us better understand how we can do this, uh, I'm joined on the line by Nondumiso Kapai, who's the head of products at APSA Home Loans. Nondumiso, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Zama. I'm excited to be here and to be chatting about this topic. Thank you. I mean, so, I mean, a lot of us who've got home loan facilities, uh, you know, want to find out how we can best maximize that facility, how we can make money from that facility, or, or how we can even save money. I mean, oftentimes I hear a lot of people saying um, they would want to open as many home loan facilities as the bank would grant them, because you're essentially able to maximize each facility as much as possible. But so many of us probably don't know what that even means or how to go about them. So I'd like us to first just start off with perhaps some of the, the key ways that people can actually make money from their respective bond facilities. Great, uh, Zama. So, so let's break it down and make it as, as simple as possible. So let's take a scenario, you are a homeowner and you have a bond with a bank. There can be three ways uh, in, in which you can access money uh, from your home loan. The, the first one is called a flexi reserve and we'll go through the detail as well. The second one is called a re-advance. And then the third one is called a further advance. So I'm gonna start with the one that excites me um, and we're gonna laugh about it because even as little as saving money from your coffee every day, it can make a huge difference. So simply a flexi reserve is when you pay extra over and above your normal monthly home loan installment, right? Now, the benefit of doing that means that over time, you can save on interest, okay? So as we know, for a home loan, uh, interest is calculated daily on the outstanding balance and it's capitalized monthly. Now, I want to take a very simple example of uh, Uzama. Let's, let's, let's make an example where you might have a property and uh, to the value of a million and uh, you have bonded it over a 20-year period. Now, you decide, hmm, I'm paying about at a rate, let's use the interest rate 7.75. And um, you are probably paying about 7,300 a month in terms of monthly installments. Now you decide, actually, let me see if I can save at least 100 bucks a month by putting it into my home loan. Uh, and I'm gonna play around with the calculator just to make it simple. So what it does, when I calculate that, it means over the term of that loan, the 20 years, you're actually saving over 30,000 rands in interest. Mm. But now let's take it further. Saving on interest is one thing, but you can actually then access the extra payments that you are making monthly to your home loan. And uh, you can access it in easy ways. Uh, from a banking point of view, it could be you simply transacting between your check account and your home loan account through this facility, either via the banking app or via internet banking. So it's as simple as that. Um, if we think about a flexi reserve and just paying a little bit extra. Obviously, the more you put in um, and as often as you can, the better that you're able to save more on interest and, and also the benefit of having to tap into the extra funds when a rainy day uh, does come along. I do think the other important aspect is obviously with regards to interest rates, right? Mm -hmm. So when interest rates do go down, you know, one would then think about, can I keep my monthly installments the way they are? Because that extra bit, that extra bit becomes your additional funds that you would then be putting into your home loan, which you can access at any point in time. So and that's simply known as a flexible reserve, yeah. 
and and with the flexi flexi reserve, I mean, so we're saving on the interest. So if you had that one million rand bond, uh, you essentially and you're putting in just an extra hundred rand, you're saving about thirty thousand rands. With that option, are you able to? Are you? Does that also have an impact on your loan term? Because I mean, oftentimes when people pay extra, um, you know, we say to you would have saved thirty thousand rands on interest, and you would have lessened the term from twenty years down to let's say seventeen years or whatever the 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 the, the term would be um, affected. Does the flexi um, reserve option also reduce the the loan term essentially as you're paying that extra money? Yeah, absolutely. So it does have an impact on term. And uh, the example that we use, and I'm going to play around with, let's say, 900,000. And again, you put in 100 rand, and at a rate of 7.75, uh, you would save on seven months. So it brings back, um, you know, seven months. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, if you play around with different values, for somebody who's looking at a 1.5, because I really want to make it a uh, real. Um, to those that are listening, and you put in, let's say, 500 rands a month, uh, you are saving over 147,000 rands in interest. Mm -hmm. And then the term, to your point, Zama, it means you're bringing back 20 months um, in terms of the benefit that you'll see by just paying a little bit extra uh, on a monthly basis uh, into your home loan. And I actually want to encourage our viewers at home to play around with that uh, home loan calculator. I It's one of my favorite tools to play around with. Um, I mean, I think if anything, you sometimes even able to see if you put in a once off amount. So let's say you're just putting in 2000 Rand once off. Um, how much would you have saved? It's able to tell you that kind of data. So yeah. sometimes yeah. maybe you don't want to commit to an extra 500 rand. And it might be because you, you don't have it. I mean, we're currently going through really difficult times financially. So you might not have that little bit extra, but you might have just that 2000 rand. So if you put it in there, already you can see just by putting it in here, this is how much I would have essentially saved yeah. or I would have yeah. shaved off whether it's a month or two months of uh, two months of my uh, bond payment. And again, I think one of the things that you mentioned that so many of us, um, I hope are taking advantage of, especially since we've had the interest rate decrease um, and so many of them this year, is that every time the interest rate decreases, you keep the loan payment the same. So sometimes it literally means calling your bank and saying, hi, please keep it the same. I mean, my, my bond payment was 7,000 rands. I know we've, we've just had a reduction. So maybe now it might be 6,800, but I actually want it to stay the same because you would have already budgeted for that 7,000. I mean, it's been going off for a couple of months. So it's already in, in your normal monthly expenses. So you don't need access really to that you know, additional 200 or whatever the funds are. So I yeah. do urge our viewers at home to actually make sure that as we keep getting the decreases and maybe there might be another one. I mean, a lot of us who have home loans would love to see another interest rate um, cut uh, to just make sure that you call the bank and you just ask them to let it remain the same. And it does have quite a long, a big impact in the long run. So no, so that's the first one. So that's the flexi reserve. Um, you mentioned the re-advance. Um, how yeah. does that happen? Okay. So a re-advance simply means that we're going to use Yuzama again. Let's say you have a million rent property. Over time, you've paid it down to 800,000. And then you come back today and then you say, actually, you know what? Can I access the difference? So literally, I would like to take my home loan back to the original loan amount that was granted. Um, it's as simple as that. And um, I guess here, the, the difference is that we are going to look at a credit assessment. We are going to credit assess the application as it comes through to ensure that, again, from an NCA perspective, that you are able to, to afford. Now, the re-advance um, product does not require uh, any registration at the D's office because it's simply taking what you have already by this time and taking it back to the original uh, home loan amount that was granted when you got the bond initially. It's as simple as that. And often, I mean, I can, I can imagine different people would have different reasons um, for doing this, but what have you found are some of the reasons why somebody would want to take the loan amount back? Is it maybe to finance another property or you just need that, that cash for whatever purposes that um, you might want to use it for? Yeah, so, so as a bank, obviously we wouldn't di dictate uh, what customers should do with their money, but typically 
homeowners would want to renovate um, and would want to access that cash to, to make changes to their homes or to, to renovate or do anything special to their homes. But also it's about being able to access the funds for anything. Um, it could be a rainy day or it could be to pay, purchase other assets. Um, and it could be for wealth creation purposes. So really it's up to the individual or the homeowner as they decide based on their dreams and goals um, around what they would want to do with those funds. I think as a bank, we're here to enable uh, to really make those dreams possible for, for, for homeowners. And, and, and I like that idea that you, know, you have access to additional um, funds or funds that you would have already sort of paid up because you now have a bit of equity in your own property. Um, on this re advance, would that essentially also include, suppose you put down a significant deposit, so say in that 1 million rand property, Zama seems to have a lot of those <laughs> in our scenario. So in that 1 million rand property, I put down uh, 100,000 rand and now I've paid, let's say I've paid um, an additional 200 over the years. So I essentially have 300,000 rands that I can access. So am I also able to essentially access the deposit component um, that I paid at the beginning of the term? So, so it sounds like, so we're talking a couple of things. So, so obviously as you pay uh, your deposit when you've applied, remember there's a loan to value component. So it, yes. it obviously reduces the amount that you're asking from the bank. I think let's, 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 let's probably separate those. But if you are saying you are paying more and more into your home loan, it takes us back to a, a situation where you've got those prepaid funds because they'll, they'll still be there, right? Um, and it also means that you sit with a re-advance uh, benefit as well. So you can actually access both uh, in a way, um, you know, as you, as you pay more. So I just wanted us to separate the initial deposit because that brings down your loan, to, uh, the, the amount that you're borrowing from the bank but also recognizing the fact that whatever you've put in extra over and above still becomes available and you still get that benefit from an interest point of view and a term, but also it means that what you're owing is less and you can still go back up to that original amount that you, uh, you would have borrowed initially. So I, I'm going to stay on this one just a little because I, I've heard people um, play around with their bonds in, in interesting ways that uh, I think that's and it's always great to learn around, you know, to learn about the different ways that people play around with their bond. So in the event, again, where it's this 1 million rand um, property, of course, if I've got the 10% deposit, um, the, the odds would have been that the bond that's registered is, is 900,000 rands. So yeah. I'm essentially asking, I still have that 100,000 and I want the, I mean, I still have that 100,000 and I want the bond to still be registered at 1 million rand, even though I'm going to uh -huh. deposit that 100,000 rand. So I know that the bond that's registered, so the deeds office has it as that 1 million. And I know that the facility in its entirety is still going to be a million. I'll still deposit yes. that 100,000 after that million rand has been registered. Just so from the bank's perspective, I also have a, decent yeah, loan to value yeah. but essentially I want to make sure that um, I want to now essentially establish once I've paid the additional 200,000 let's say I'm able to get there after four years yeah can I do I now have access to 300,000 yeah. rands or will I only have access to just the 200,000 and not that other 100,000 that was essentially the deposit component so I love the question because it's taking us into a space where I know some would call it a future bond where you register a higher bond amount it's yeah. definitely, you can do it. Yeah. Um, and I guess the benefit, Sama, is that you would pay the, the cost of registering a higher bond at that point in time. And yeah. you can come back, Sama, you're right. You can come back and, and request for money up to that, uh, above, above, up to that million, whatever that uh, bond uh, has been registered at the D's office. And you can access that, certainly. We call it a, a future bond uh, within the EPSA home loan space. And it can be done. Those that can do it at the point of registering a bond, um, it is a good thing. Um, because then it means you won't have to pay those uh, costs to take a bond uh, higher up. Yeah. Before we go to, to, the, to the third one, um, so you know, you mentioned when we started this conversation that that third one is the future advance. I actually want us to take a, a quick break. We're already getting uh, lots of questions from our viewers at home. Remember, if you have any questions for Nundumiso, uh, do send them through and we'll be sure to address them shortly. We'll be just back um, just after the short break. 
Hello. This evening, I'm joined by Nondumi Sotkapai, who's the head of products at APSA Home Loans. And we're talking about how to use your home loan to access money. And I'm sure that so many of us probably want to be able to access money into our home loans, especially if you've been paying extra. The two um, different ways that you can access money that Nondumi mentioned just before the break was the Flexi Reserve. Um, and then the second one, and the Flexi Reserve, of course, is when you pay in a little bit extra, whether it's a 100 Rand a month or 500 Rand a month or whatever little that you have, you essentially will be able to have access to those funds in the future. So every time you have a little bit of spare change, always just throwing into your home loan account, it never goes wasted. It really does go a long way. Not only do you save on interest, but you're also able to essentially cut down on your term period or the, the, the length of your loan. And then the second one is the re-advance. And of course that re-advance is if you've already, let's say paid 200 rand, I mean 200,000 rands into a 1 million rand bond, and you now want to have access or you want to bring your bond back to a million rand, then you're essentially able to do that. So you'll have access to that 200,000 rands. Um, and of course, APSA is going to make sure that they still write, uh, do a, a credit check to make sure that you're essentially still able to afford that amount. And, and in the event that you do, then you'll have access to those funds. The third one that we're going to go through right now is further advance. Nundu, if you can take us through what a further advance is and how that one works and how people can essentially make money from that option as well. Okay, great. So a further advance um, means that we're looking at you can then apply to access the equity in your property by, by simply then um, accessing that difference. So let's take Zama's example where the property is now worth 1.5. It means now Zama is looking at increasing her original bond from 1 million to 1.5. And it means that at the deeds office will be registering the higher bond amount. Um, and that's when we talk about unlocking equity uh, based on the market value of your property that would have gone up. Um, it does entail some of the uh, credit assessment uh, from the bank. Um, it's fundamentally different from a flexi reserve, um, which is obviously where you pay extra. And here we would need to look at whether you would be able to afford um, the higher bond amount. Um, I do know that before the break, we also spoke about the future bond component. So, so here, we assume that obviously you hadn't registered that higher bond, but now you're simply asking, I do want a higher one, but obviously it is going to be based on the increased uh, market value of your, your property. I was actually about to ask that if the market value is taken into consideration, but also then that means that um, there also are bond registration costs because you yeah. now essentially registering a yeah. higher bond than what yeah. you previously yeah. uh, had yeah. to register. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, and just a quick one. I, mean, I don't know if our viewers at home would probably find this beneficial. Are there instances, because I've heard some people say that they're able to get their bags to do this, but have there been instances, uh, certainly from APSA's perspective, where um, that those bond registration costs are able to be absolved within the loan facility itself? So if the bond registration, let's say, is going to cost 20,000 rands, instead of the person paying the attorney's direct um, that amount be, uh, you know, put that cost essentially be factored into the loan amount. So let's say the loan, instead of it being a hundred thousand, I mean, one million rand, it ends up being a million and twenty thousand rand. Is that something that APSA sometimes um, does with clients who are getting that, that bond facility? Yeah. So it really depends uh, on the proposition that we would have put out in the market and we review our propositions from time to time. Um, we, we have always looked at what the bank can put in on, on behalf of the customer. So in some cases, uh, based on campaigns, yeah, I'm talking about proposition campaigns where we would go out and say to our existing customer that if you do want to access equity, uh, we do have an offer where we as a bank will put in a certain amount towards the registration costs. And then as a customer, you would only have very little to put in. So again, it depends from time to time what propositions um, we run as a bank uh, to assist customers and to fulfill the needs of our customers' dreams. And that really is quite a, a great way to unlock value and equity into your property because I can imagine, um, especially um, after last year when, you know, in, in Johannesburg, where you saw COJ doing the rates 
um, and valuating the different properties. And people saw some of their property, the value of their properties going higher. I know some people had quite a number of complaints because it obviously affects the actual rates that you pay the municipality. But I think for some, it probably then um, makes a good business case to then approach your bank to say, well, you know, when I bought this property, it was valued at 1 million Rand. COJ has now come and they've, you know, they, they're estimating that it's now currently valued at 1.8 million Rand. And suppose you actually do qualify for, you know, that higher bond amount. You essentially would have unlocked that value. And maybe if you want, you can use what it, those funds, whatever purpose that you'd actually want to use it for. Nundumi, so we have yeah. been receiving quite a lot of questions and comments from our viewers at home. Remember, if you've got any questions, you're more than welcome to send it through and we'll be uh, addressing them. The first one that I'm going to ask is, from uh, from Unzalama uh, Mongele, who asks, if you aren't working anymore, can you really access the funds? And this is, of course, in reference to, let's say, the, the, the flexi reserve, where you've already paid in all those additional funds over the years. Perhaps you are affected by the current retrenchments that are taking place, and you're now no longer working. Will a customer be able to essentially access those additional funds that they've paid over the years? That's a, that's a brilliant question because it opens up another conversation. But let's start with, I'm no longer working and I've had prepaid funds. So let's assume that you did not fall into arrears, right? Because there are cases where if you do fall into arrears, um, the prepaid funds will be used to pay uh, the arrears and to bring you up to date. So let's assume you're not in arrears, um, you find yourself in a situation where you're no longer working, you can access those funds. But then again, Zama, I would then say, rather approach the bank, have a conversation around your situation, uh, because there are various solutions that we've got in place to assist customers that find themselves in that situation. And we look at different, whether it's a short-term plan, long-term plans, forbearing plans, those plans are there. Why I like the question, um, I like it because it leads us into a payment relief that was launched uh, by EPSA Bank. Uh, end of March, which, which looked at how to assist customers during the current context that we find ourselves in as a country. So, and I'm going to bring it home to a, a home loan because we're talking bonds tonight. So simply that, that relief program says you can defer payments up to three months, for three months, which means that you won't be paying. Um, however, we will continue to charge interest and fees um, during that period and capitalize. And then at the end of the three month payment relief, what we will do as a bank, we will then look at you individually and understand how, what long term do we need to apply to enable you to pay almost the same amount that you were paying before the payment relief. Um, and I'm glad because the question was raised because it's, a, it's another way that we as a bank are looking at assisting customers that find themselves in a very difficult situation given where we are as a country. Um, and no, there's another question um, coming in is coming in from Bongs Sibakwe now who asked, so if you re-advance, do you get a new term to pay back or do you have to pay the money back in the original term agreed when you first took the bond? So, so it depends. Remember, we will credit assess it and, and calculate what is required for, you know, based on your individual uh, profile. So I don't want to give a standard uh, answer to that, but we will credit assess. And that's why it's important for both products, we advance, further advance. When you apply, we look at your own individual um, affordability. And based on that, we're able then to determine what is required in terms of the monthly payments and the term. And, and then another one um, coming in is, what are the implications of refinance on investment property when it comes to tax, seeing that interest that you pay on the bond date is tax deductible? So that's an interesting one. And where it comes to tax, um, I would really say that is where you need to approach the bank and talk to your tax consultant to understand the implications, especially where you have several properties and, and what it means to you as an individual. Okay, um, so if you are, of course, tuned in, do send in more of your questions. These are really good questions. Uh, we've got another one coming in from Sianda Nanga, who asks, under re-advance, will the term go back to the original 20 years 
or remain where it is, including the monthly repayment? So, so let's take an example. If the term was to remain where it is, of course, the implication would be that you would have to pay slightly higher. So, and I think that's an important uh, principle to learn is that the shorter the term, the more you're asking for, the slightly higher it is, and obviously considering uh, interest. So, and I'll go back to say, uh, when you do apply, we will look at your own individual application and understand what the new installment will be and, and the new term. Okay, another um, question coming in. These are really great questions. I can see uh, a lot of us are into property. We've got different bond facilities and we're really trying to find the different ways that we can unlock uh, some cash in those respective facilities, whether we've been paying extra or whether perhaps we want to, you know, to have an equity stake or a bigger equity stake in our respective properties. Another one, and this is for somebody who wants a foot into the property ladder, is coming in from Zwa Tabete, who asks how can he apply uh, for a home loan. So where would be the starting point if you wanted to apply for an APSA home loan? So, so obviously, if I think about where we are today, the current context, uh, you can apply online uh, on our website, apsa.co.za. Um, you can also reach us and contact us through our call center line, uh, which is the 0860 007 uh, line, or you can approach the branch. Um, to, to then engage and, and apply for a home loan. Um, on the website, we've got all the relevant information. And I guess one of the big ones, Zama, if I can, is uh, talk about the home loan estimator tool that we've got, um, which will help uh, the aspiring homeowner to calculate and get a view of what they're likely to get from a bank um, if they were to apply. When you go through that home loan estimator process, we will look at your credit uh, profile at that point in time. We will ask you for your income and your expenses to understand your affordability. Um, we will score it and give you an offer. And you can then use that to go shopping for a home within your affordability. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great tool because you don't have to submit an application. Simply go in, in under 10 minutes, you can get a view of what the bank is likely to give you should you apply for a home loan from, from us. And it really is such a great tool. I think more than anything, it also, um, not only does it help you in terms of how much a bank is willing to potentially give you in a home loan, but it also helps scale down your search. So instead of viewing a 2 million rand house, you know that perhaps you'll only uh, qualify for max 1.5. Um, maybe you should be looking at a property that's around 1.2 to 1.4. So it even helps you in your home search and make sure yeah. that you're not too off the mark as you you know start putting together those pictures on your vision board around the property yeah. that you want. No, no, so before I let you go, any other tips for our viewers at home around how they can uh, best maximize home loan facilities that they have? Thank you. So let's go back to the Flexi Reserve. I would say start with a goal. Um, if your goal is towards a particular uh, investment at some point in time, or it's a holiday, or you want to renovate your home, start with a goal. And it's about understanding your own budget and, um, and trimming on unnecessary luxuries if you have that goal. And, and saying every little bit counts. Anything that you put in ultimately will become a benefit to you uh, from an interest point of view, from a savings. And then secondly, from a term perspective. And then thirdly, it's about the ability to access those extra funds uh, should you need to, even for a rainy day. And I guess the last one around fixed reserve is that if you have a transactional account uh, you know, with the bank, it makes it so much easier to transact between your home loan and your check account. You can easily put in more using the banking app or, or the internet banking, or you can draw out as and when you require. So that would be the tips. And then around the re-advance and the further advance. Again, it's about understanding your own affordability at that point in time. The two, the two options do mean that we will credit, uh, look at a credit assessment to understand whether your affordability is uh, sufficient uh, for us to grant you that additional credit. And again, from time to time as a bank, um, we will look at different propositions. We do launch campaigns where 
in, in some cases, we are able to pay a certain portion of the registration costs when it comes to a further advance. And then the last one, Zama, if I can, is also around uh, when you do apply for a bond the first time uh, as a homeowner or a property investor, if you are able to register a higher bond amount, you can, um, that can be done. And then further down the line, should you need to access those extra funds, um, then you will find that you will not have to incur the costs uh, associated with registering a higher bond amount. Um, to sum it off, I mean, as a bank, we're here to enable dreams and, and really going back to the question around, you know, I'm no longer working, what should I do? There is a payment relief program that we have launched as a bank, and it's there to help you as a homeowner for the period uh, in which you might find yourself being under a lot of strain uh, financially. Approach us, we're there to help. All the information is on our website. And of course, if you want to find out more information on that, you can go to www.apsa.co.za and they are more than happy to help. Nundumiso, thank you so much for joining us this evening. That's Nundumiso Tapai, who's the head of products at APSA Home Loans. And we've, of course, been looking at the different ways that you can access money uh, using your home loan facility. We're back again tomorrow evening. I hope that you'll be staying home and staying safe. And of course, if you want to catch up on some of our older episodes, if you've missed any, you can always go back right here on Facebook or go onto YouTube to look at the past episodes. Until tomorrow evening, stay home and stay safe. Thank you, Nandumiso.